Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a very special Wilds of Eldraine draft, because today we are joined by the best Magic player in the world at the moment. He is the player of the year. He's won multiple Grand Prix. He's been top eighting basically every event. You know him, you love him. It is Simon Nielsen, all the way from Denmark. Welcome to the channel. Hello. I am not the best Magic player at the moment, but maybe I'm <laughs> kind of starting to be up there, you know? Yeah, I uh, I like calling you the best Magic player in the world uh, because uh, I feel like Player of the Year is really like a sustained achievement level type thing where you don't get there unless you are at least in consideration at the moment. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I probably also can't like completely like run from it. That, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely been uh, been very exciting these these, these last uh, few months. Yeah, so you've been playing a lot of Magic at a high level recently. You've been doing really well mm -hmm. in Wilds of Eldraine specifically, and you went 4-2 and two at the World Championships in the draft format. But the thing that I most uh, think is amazing is that you started off 0-2 in the tournament, and then you knew you had to pretty much win out, including a 3-0 draft. So what was it like sitting down to a draft of the format where you kind of knew that you had to win every round? Did you treat it a little bit differently, or was it just same old, same old, hope for the best? Actually, I didn't completely have to win out. I had, like, two losses to give at the end. Um, mm. So, uh, but, I mean, I definitely, when I started 0-2, I knew that, like, you know, especially, like, my goal was just to make the 2 of the event, honestly. So, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't take that many more losses before that would, like, be locked out. Um, but I think, um, like, I, I think it's, like, I don't really like, think of it as, like, oh, I need to, like, you know, win every round from now on. Um, it's it's more like, like, I know that, Sometimes I'm gonna have tournament like I'm gonna have some tournaments where I'm gonna go ten and two. Um, mm -hmm. It has happened a lot. It it makes sense. The losses like if they're distributed randomly, sometimes they just come in the first two rounds. Mm -hmm. So whenever I start 0-2, yeah. I just imagine okay, so this is the ten two where my losses came in the first two rounds, and now my wins are gonna come. Um, and obviously, like they're not just gonna come. I'm gonna have to work for them. But it's it's because it seems like this unsurmountable task when you think like. Wow, like winning like every match from now on, or winning like you know, like going like I guess I had to go like ten and two from that point to make top yeah. eight. Um, it seems like a lot, but you can just like break it down into smaller bits where it's like, okay, well, I mean, I need to like make sure I win this third round of, of draft so I don't go o three, and then yeah. I need to do pretty good and constructed. I do love my standard deck, and then I could like move on to the next day, and then like next day there's a new challenge. It's like, okay, well, the first step is like sitting down for the draft, and so mm -hmm. it's it's more about like breaking it into smaller chunks. And also realizing that it is very much possible to, like, win out even though you start with a couple losses because, yeah, again, you know, yeah. sometimes it just distributes that way. Yeah, that's really cool. And especially, like, I imagine when you're playing against the best drafters in the world, the format feels a little bit different. Like, you don't just get to have perfect playables. Is that kind of how it ends up feeling? Like, the, the games are scrappier or something? We'll say that I actually don't know any other way. I think I did, like... <laughs> Four arena drafts, and then I mostly drafted <laughs> on. Uh, no, but it's, it's, it's very serious. Like it's because uh, because like um like playing on the pro tour, like those drafts, they're they're usually so different than like um than arena drafts. Yeah, and and like Magic Online leagues and so on. So like for this time, I actually tried to prioritize not playing very much on arena and play um Magic Online eight mans. Uh, yeah. Or specifically trying to get teammates into drafting me in the eight mans. Yeah. Um, and I got my butt kicked. Like I went, like, I don't know. I I think I did like fifteen drafts, and mm -hmm. I lost the first round like ten or eleven times. Um, <laughs> and then I won one of those drafts. So like it was, yeah, it, yeah. it went badly for me um, in, in the preparation. Yeah. Uh, but that's why you prepare so that you can then on day two just win your draft on day two of the world yeah exactly make, make make sure your your practice is harder than your uh, tournament yeah that's awesome so we're going to be diving into this draft as we get like the queue going is there any like deck that you really hope to draft any deck you try to avoid is that uh something you think about when you're sitting down to draft um yeah I generally so i generally like to like draft the green piles um mm -hmm. we, like, we're really happy with like the black green splash something uh, type thing. I was mostly like, just following my my uh, you know t teammates' advice. There's not really anything I try to avoid. Like even blue white, we were actually pretty high on on the team. Like, I think it's like a totally mm -hmm. fine deck. Um, so I think like I just like try and like know how to draft every archetype. Um, and and like go with that. Yeah, I think yeah, it's especially in the in the pro to in the world championship level things where 
everyone's going to know the good cards. So the underdrafted decks, you can like get, you'll know they'll be more open because everyone knows if they're underdrafted. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you open your pack, do you look at the rare first? Do you go through it from front to back? What's your just like, you're sitting down. How do you look at this pack? What are the cards that jump out to you? Yeah, definitely like try and check the rare, see if it's a bomb. It's not, it's okay, but it's it's not like um, a high pick, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Um and some like trying to look through the other cards here, like see if there's any like strong commons or or like a great common popping out to me. Mm -hmm. I think like right here, the I try and identify like the best common here, which is Voracious Women. Uh, I think that's better than Stab Wound. And then I think like, yeah, I don't I just take that here. The Ash is like pretty like committal. The Twisted yeah. Fealty like team uh, Wealthy Count would really like that for the red decks, and I think that makes a lot of sense. But I'm not yeah. super comfortable drafting in their style yet. Mm -hmm. So if we just kind of relay how Team Handshake would draft. I think the Vermin would be the pick out of this pack. Yeah, so speaking of the team aspect a little bit, you're on Team Handshake, one of the best teams, if not the best team in the world right now. So you you mentioned that Team Worldly Council likes different cards. Does that mean you're like talking with the other teams and collaborating with them on that? Or is that just something you figured out based on yes, like, so watching Yes, so one of my best friends in the whole world is like Zen Takahashi, who is the team leader mm -hmm. of uh, Team Worldly Council. So mm -hmm. we just like end up talking like naturally um, okay. and, and discussing things. Nice. Um, so yeah, we definitely like, did some debriefing, um, and like tried to like, you know, just, just figure out where we had, and it was just really interesting for me to hear that like they had, this time they had a very different approach to draft than we did. They really like the like red aggressive decks and where we think Flicker coin and rat out are like just straight up unplayable. They were really high on Flicker coin. So that's <laughs> yeah. a big difference. Okay. So um, got a for this vermin. here, yeah, what do you like I here? The, the, the click, the second vermin, the cooped up and the cut in, I... Usually, like, like to keep myself open. I wouldn't mind taking a threat by click here. I think maybe I'm leaning towards the cooped up, though. Yeah, it keeps um, you a little bit more I flexible. Don't mind white. Yeah, I think I we, we can definitely take the cooped up here. So taking it like vermin into vermin, it's also like just not like that's just like a pretty good start. So yeah, I think it's nice. the team I'm yeah. definitely one that's leaning more towards just like always keeping my options open. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's drafting a little bit more like. Uh, um, yeah, a, a little bit more worried, uh, where like other people in the team might want to just like lock in a single color, uh, and, mm -hmm. and then I think it's so, cool that both approaches can be valid. Here we see the end as maybe the best black card, there's hopeful vigil maybe as the best white card, and then there's like cut in if we wanted to go into another color, though the end is probably the removal spell we'd take. Which one, which card um, do you like? Like, you know? I think cut in is probably better than the end, maybe. Oh, sure. yeah, that, that makes sense. Do you value close, seeing like, the, Yeah, I guess in your tournaments it's open deck list, so you get to know their deck anyway uh oh yeah that can't matter that much i think maybe it can i don't know um okay. so yeah it's true you do get to see the hand i think the end is probably this pick here though like even if it is slightly worse than cotton which i'm not sure if it is or isn't yeah. uh i see the five life list thing also matters like you know having a two man removal spell when you're mm -hmm. behind is pretty cool all right yeah. so here like we really like monstrosity that was a card we had very high um mm -hmm. Probably also because we don't respect the X1 hate. Um, yeah, so I love Mythstrosity as well. It's funny because even when they do kill it, you feel like you're like, oh, I got a food. It's still fine. <laughs> yeah, it don't matter that much. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just like a little guy. Also, like the other black two drops are like pretty bad. So yeah. in the black decks, I could just take like, the right lead from Mythstrosity goes up a little bit. Um, do you have like this pack doesn't have that many other strong cards? There, are, there is like a lot of blue going on here. The Vampiric Rites is definitely like pretty interesting, but not this early. Uh, mm -hmm. Might have been like if we had like two vermins, maybe we're even more interested in. I'd say the candy trade is like a solid playable kind of like yeah. stalker and stuff like the spell starter and the gatekeeper are like pretty nice. We definitely don't mind the blue. Um, yeah, the it's not like you were avoiding blue because I know some people were like, oh, I really just don't want to draft blue at all. Yeah, we had the magical Isma write like a full like you know two page article about like how to draft blue. Um, <laughs> and it was, yeah. That's very interesting that you like have like a write up on those things. I I was about to ask, do you have like a limited meeting in the con same conventional sense? Or yeah, we actually try to um, have a limited meeting every day. Um, like Whoa. instead of going through like all the colors and like a full like four hour meeting, we try to like space it up so we would have like okay, so now we do a white meeting and then like we go do something else and then we come back later to the blue meeting and so on. Mm -hmm. So I think the good cards here are the red with Vanguard, but I haven't seen that much green, so I'm not like yeah. taking that as a signal. Uh, otherwise, there's the quick study. The stopgap is like kind of like whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Quick and study is definitely whisper, best which is a, card a whisper, in the yeah. pack. I think I might want to pick up on this red signal, on the blue signal here, and, and uh, pick up the quick study. Nice. Now. Yeah, uh, now there's a spell stutter. There's not yeah, a lot of spell stutter here. is like not something we take super highly, but this pack is also like kind of stinky. Mm -hmm. um, the three bowls of porridge is probably the pick here, though. I think I really like that card. Really, that's cool. I've never even. I've never. I've. 
never played this card and I've never seen it in play, but that's really cool to like, because obviously I'm not uh, testing with a bunch of other great folks. It's mostly just like what I see on arena a lot of the time, but that's really cool. I, uh, what do you like about this card? Um, I'd like the flavor. It's like so cool. Uh, but also <laughs> it's not, like, what do you just do with it? It's like, you know, it's a removal spell. Then you like tap something to gain some, and then like you can bargain it away. It's really good to bargain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. actually just like very flexible, goes to food synergies and like other yeah. things. I think it's like nice to take there. Yeah. Uh, wow. That is a very late fawn. Okay. So maybe that is worth speculating on here. Um, mm -hmm. one thing that's really interesting about drafting on arena, I'm not really used to that, is that I also have to like turn off a little bit of my trying to react to every signal because not everything is a signal. Is the yeah. Thing. I think that's, yeah, it's funny because when you're used to drafting with like other world championship contenders, everyone knows that Root Rider fawn is great. But sometimes it's like balancing like what people think no is good versus like obviously you're not gonna get removal late, but like fawn. We could totally yeah, just draft like a green black we pile have still. Seen some green signaling that we've had packs that were very heavy on green commons, even though the commons weren't mm -hmm. like good. Um yeah. but it might show something. Yeah. All right. So as I always like to say, the the dra it, when I have a guest on, the deck is always a masterpiece. And if it does poorly, it's just because I play it badly. Because <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so I none of the blame goes to you. Gonna you, get, be a masterpiece. you get all the uh, credit, none of the blame. challenging to talk and draft at the same time. Also, for some reason, it feels like very far back that I drafted this set. It was like two weeks ago, but it feels like an insanity ago. Um, <laughs> rat out, the tracker. Yeah, probably. I don't really like rat out. Maybe I took the tracker, actually. Nice. Yeah. Tracker is really funny in certain matchups because they don't expect you to have a 2-4 reach and then they just like, oh my gosh, that's really good against my 1-1 one, one fairy. All right, so here we have incredible blue cards into the fake horde and Aquatic Alchemist. You can, by the way, see that, like, you know, me, like, not really reacting to the flicker coin that other people might like a lot. But yeah, yeah I just, like, um, again, I'm not comfortable with drafting that way, but I, I can definitely speak to you that this would be something mm -hmm. that... Which one? Uh, anyway, I think I like want? into the fake horde. I think it's the best blue common. Um, nice. It's yeah. funny because... I uh, have heard a lot of people say that, and it feels like I maybe drafted incorrectly because every time I play it, I like feel like I die the turn after I cast it. Yes, but you have that... to make sure to build your deck around it where you have more cheap cards. So, mm -hmm. um, and stuff like the Mocking Sprite goes pretty well with it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy to pick that up here. Yeah. Um, so not really sure if we're like actually moving into this like green thing. It's definitely not a Mocking Sprite territory. Uh, might just end up in, in blue-black here, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, yeah, the sprite is pretty bad. I think I actually like the worm. Like, it's, yeah, uh, me too. It's a good boy. Um, I've really not liked. We could also like visitor. definitely end up in blue green. Um, yeah, the the tracker like goes well with that, and yeah, it's interesting to see. I'm not really sure where this is uh where this is going, but I do like the worm. Uh, yeah, I think ended up in my three O deck actually. Wow, and then tabling the witch stalker. I am very hyped about that. That card is yeah. uh, pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good, two and two three green. just blocks everything. It goes great with the worm. It's exactly what you want with fake court. Yeah. Like something early that blocks. Oh, and uh, I'm definitely not. Yeah, the spreading seas is, is nice to have here for for bargain. Okay, yeah. so I think I'm I'm like we're going into that. We sadly don't have like a grapple to splash. We have the end, which is like way less splashable. Uh, yeah. Commune is good if we open uh, the, the rough triplets. Rough. That's literally the only time I've played it. I'm good to hear the. This is pretty nice. I'm really hyped to take the uh, the Yenna here and combine with our cooped up, and then we do a little splash. I oh think yeah, I just move the uh, the black cards to the side now because I yeah think I'm very likely to play any of those. Yeah, it's perfect. This is a great card. We have a little bit of fixing with the Root Rider Fawn, and mm -hmm. then we can fix fix some other fixing up. We've got card draw to help us find our stuff. This is a great card. Yep. It's I'm also so... moving the uh, right in the commune to the sideboard mentally here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The Mocking Spike could end up in the deck, but yeah, I don't think I'm playing it in a blue green deck. Right so now. if you were drafting this at like a like world like world championship, you open your Yana in pack two. Do you like like bring it to the front of the pack and like do you have like a certain routine with your pack so that you don't like give away that you opened a card you're happy about, or is it okay to like let the people around you kind of know that you're happy with your card? Well, that doesn't really matter, but I try and like look at the other cards, try and figure out what other people take. I'm also yeah. trying to practice right now, like remembering how many cards of each color are in the pack. So especially oh, okay. if like pack one is relevant. So when it comes back, I can see, okay, there were like, you know, two red cards, one blue card, three black cards taken out of the pack. Oh, that's a really good thing to that practice. Sometimes good. I do that on Magic Online. Like I'll take a screenshot of the first pack and then like cross off all the cards that I think are going to be yeah, gone. Yeah, it's much easier with screenshots, but in yeah. real life we have to like remember everything. Yeah. Also, and including like which card you have in your deck. Like that's yeah. also something yeah. you have to remember. Here there's another uh, Yes, yeah, so I think I've got to take a second cooped up here to go with the Yenna. Yeah, and our, our our splash here, trying to build a bat deck. Um, I did three zero with a bat control deck. Um, so I mean, that's uh pretty much <laughs> the dream. That's, we're yeah. on this, we're on a good wavelength here. There's another three bowls. What do you think of Crystal Grotto as fixing? 
Oh, love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's less good in a three-color deck, though. I don't think yeah. that's what we want as fixing in this deck. Mm -hmm. um, it's good in two-color decks that have, like, off-color ventures, and it's kind of, yeah. like, nice in a deck that has, like, you know, like, two off-color cards, like, in a treasure-style deck. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when you're, like, a straight-up three-color deck, it's, like, kind of underperforming. Ooh, get that up the beanstalk right into my uh, my mouth, I was about to say. <laughs> get it into my deck. <laughs> it's funny because there was uh, one of the featured drafters was Nathan Story, who's on your team, and he like first mm. picked an up the beanstalk. Yes. Is this a card that you as a team were very high on and really liked? Yes, absolutely. It's like almost hatching plans level. Um, yeah. Carl Sarap, who's like our limited guru on the team, um, described nice. it as like if you if you like trigger it once, if you don't trigger, if you just like have no other fives and you sacrifice the bargain, that's fine. It's like spreading seeds, whatever. Trigger it once, it's like a two mana draw two, then you sacrifice the bargain. That's like a pretty good card. Two mana draw two, like we don't yeah. turn that down in limited. If you yeah. end up triggering it twice though, it's just straight up hatching plans. So yeah, yeah. hatching plans is good. absurd. Like it's one of those cards that you just like see it and you're like, oh, hatching plans, this is nutty. Whoa. Oh, oh yes, the tough cookie. We were pretty close to having tough cooking in a black green constructed deck even. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. Is... One of the things that I, is very noticeable when you're when watching you play on the world stages, you get very excited and you always seem really enthusiastic, like watching you run out for like your top eight announcements. Is that, that's just how you are as a, as a person and is like very like, like yes. uh, ex excited and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's honestly <laughs> one of the like favorite, my favorite parts of it is like, oh my gosh, someone who like clearly loves the game is doing well, which is always like my favorite, but tough cookies. Yeah. Too. It's definitely like, you know, like, um, it, it's interesting because it's like both, you know, my like innate excitedness, which is like, there is a lot of, I do like, you know, like, scream and shout when I'm alone as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but also, like, I'm also, like, a performer. So, like, I, I was, like, turn it up, like, you know, like, half a notch as well, like, sometimes. Yeah, or, uh, exactly. So I do love, like, giving it for the camera. So they're kind of, like, a good combination here. Um, yeah. yeah, the Gatekeeper is, like, pretty nice. Uh, this is a bad pack. There's also, like, the, the Vault, which is not bad. The, honestly, maybe the Nightly Valor is where we go. Because um, oh. Oh, also together. what I'm looking at here is that we might not necessarily be that blue. We could like You're right. switch completely into just green white at this point. Um, right, good call. So yeah, because I think the gatekeeper is like fine. It's like mm -hmm. especially good in blue, red, blue, green. But yeah, we can probably table it or something. I like, go get one later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty happy with the gale fang there. And when, when you're drafting, like, and you can't look at your cards, would you still, do you think, you, you like, keep that in mind? Like, oh, I have four blue cards that I'm happy with. I have got three blue three cards. Right? The Mugging Sprite is already out, and the Spreading Seas is also kind of out. We only have two blue cards, right? Right. So, like, it's not actually, but that is it's something that is, like, you know, really difficult when you are drafting, um, with, yeah. have, like, face down. Because, like, yeah. you often end up with your, looking at your deck, and you're like, oh, I only had four red cards. Like, I, what happened? Yeah, <laughs> and exactly. you realize you might actually supposed to be red anyway. Yeah. Um, Yes, Ooh. Griffin Airy. That is oh, I didn't even see. Oh my God, there's so many good cards. This pack we is do so good. Airy, but yeah, let's. We we're not gonna take that here. We're gonna take the Glodden, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty sure. There's that. There's Graceful Takedown too. Is there? As the Graceful Takedown is pretty good for sure. Um, we do have the Coop of this removal. It also like like we're not necessarily that good at enchanting our stuff. Um, yeah. If we're gonna be green white, we're gonna be better probably. But um, yeah, this I'm just gonna take the Glodden here. I guess another Glodden's five. Uh, it's fantastic. Our, our beanstalk. Oh, and there's a curse. Okay, well, yeah, so green was our, just our, incredibly yeah. open from both sides. Yeah, it doesn't matter that much really coming together. Yeah. yeah, it's it's interesting because I imagine when you're drafting without being able to see your cards, are there certain, like, you obviously, I mean, maybe you can, but I assume you can't remember literally every card you have, but do you track certain metrics like, oh, this is how many two drops I have, this is how many removal spells I have, or is there some sort of strategy you have there? Um, yeah, I usually like try and look at two drops when I'm looking at my packs, like between uh, doing look at my deck between picks, um, and like well, between packs, I try and track my removal spells, my curve, like have rough mm -hmm. numbers. But I usually also remember most of the cards. I wouldn't be able yeah. to like recite all of them, but yeah, so this yeah. is interesting between the triumphant and the witch. I think I take the triumphant here, um, yeah, because we might get the two free next pack. Uh, I think uh, I take yeah. the three drop here, um, yeah. the parents, yeah. Uh, there's yeah. like the uh, the two, the tangle span lookout is like a super combo with return triumphant. Oh, Otherwise, yeah. I'm not super interested in playing the card. Yeah, uh, I like this one sometimes it. in red white when you have ginger. Yes, like, very like, good in red white. Yeah, the, the little ginger guy. How many, the guy that was from a <laughs> ginger brute? Yeah, the one that like can be unblockable. Yeah, it's like very interesting combo. here. I really like the diminisher witch in like a lot of what we have going on here. 
Uh, but I think I'm just gonna take the sage anyway. Ah, uh, maybe I would take the witch there actually. Just like hedge yeah. the remind of more blue. There's also another yeah. into the fake court, but I think the ship has sailed on that one. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the first candy trail is always like going in the deck. Um, yeah. Also work with soft cookie and like other food synergies we pick up. Yeah. It's and nice then now to have it today. I also really like the blue guy. Um, the two drop there, but yeah. yeah, we can probably just take the one three. I don't know. It might. It's really hard when like the time is running out on these because I might have yeah. like taken some of the blue cards to hedge at the end there. But yeah, once you don't take the miniature witch, it's harder to take the other two drop. And oh, there's a uh, gingerbread hunter. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's funny because the is... yeah the hedging is always like, what do I hedge? Do you ever consider like uh, what the person next to you might be drafting? Like oh. I, yes. There's only a couple cards left, so I'll just take something that he might be able to play with. Like, um, no, not that often. I try to be collaborative. I like sometimes yeah. like you do I, in like uh, Barcelona. I ended up with seven basic lands because I just like right. Bad cards. Yeah, that's what I like <laughs> to do as well. Yeah, you like be like, hey, I'm taking the basic land. You can have this bad white card. And they're like, oh, white card. I get this. I get yeah. your. <laughs> yeah, here, gingerbread bread hunter is just fantastic. We might be able to splash it like very marginally off of something. I yeah, mean, we at least have like cast. a fawn and like maybe we pick up something else. We didn't see any of the fixing, no like evolving wild sable from like pack two, pick one. I don't know yeah. if you like noticed that, but that was one that I tried. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it's not three blind mice, but it is a very good one. The princess takes flight. We're definitely happy with that one. Yeah, it feels like every time my opponent casts this, I lose. It's like almost unbeatable. It feels like sometimes it's unbelievable with Yenna as well. That's a mm -hmm. good combo. It just this card is so. From the first time I read it, where I was like, oh, they get their guy back to, oh, the, it doesn't have a third chapter. That one just never happens. <laughs> yeah. So there's Princess Takes Flight. There's also Curse Court here. And, uh. Yeah, and they're like Curse of the Way of Fox. Like, yeah. these are all good. I like the, the Oof is an okay sidebar card. You don't try yeah. to maintain it often. The Apple is just like often always just playable. Like, where yeah. he's like, in a lot of decks, you can, you can make it work. Yeah, I'm going to take the, the Princess Takes Flight. I was really like excited to see, uh, Three blind mice. That was what I was hoping uh, to pair with. It's such my, a good uh, combo with Yenna, one. yeah. Do you have a certain number of like two drop creatures that you're looking for in a deck? Like I think this is a pretty clear. Uh we've deck. already exceeded that number. I don't you think like, the number is that high here. I want like four to five. Um, you want four to five? Okay. Does that yeah, change usually. based on the type of Even deck in, you're like, playing? Uh, it, so it changes depending on which deck I'm playing. Like like if you're an aggro deck, do you want more two yeah, drops? Actually, or do you in our always red white decks, um Javier Dominguez was our red white master and he had this very interesting point that he doesn't want more than like five early drops. Because, like, it's, you're just, like, an outmatched in the late game by Hamlet Glutton. So he just wanted, like, more beef in his red-white decks. If you Interesting. Get like, five That's... to six, uh, one and two drops. You said he was the red-white specialist. Was that just because he happened to draft it a lot, or did you, like, divvy that yeah, up? Yeah, he was just the one. He was the one mostly drafting on Arena and happened to, to get it a lot, yeah. So mm -hmm. a card I really like here is the, the Kalan's Light Blades. Um, so I'm yeah. pretty happy to, to pick that up. Uh, I also do like the Pie Wielder, so I'm going to have to make a decision um it's a little bit hard for me to like discern how many creatures with this removal we have here we have Might 12 creatures mm, 12 creatures but, but, but they also have the hopeful vigil which counts as a creature so like 13 yeah creatures. i'm having this tracker uh in the hopeful vigil dot add um uh, yeah i'm gonna take the removal spell here it also like it's good to get more bargain cards with the protector parent we're a little low yeah. on that so yeah, yeah i'm gonna take the, the vigil or sorry the yeah yeah i knew what you meant the princess takes flight you just that's one of the biggest blowouts. Is when you, they have chapter two of the princess takes flight, and then you're like, "Please attack me, so I can like bargain that way." <laughs> uh, we're probably gonna take the Vanguard here. I kind of like, you know, feel a bit saturated on two drops though, so I might want to take the uh, the Werefox instead. Yeah, I'm not super interested in the Prism because I'm not splashing that much. Um, yeah, there's just one card, and we already have like a Fawn that we can get. Yeah, and we don't have like a. Uh, uh, I forgot the name. We always just call it Mommy. Um, the um, Celebrant. Um, <laughs> the, the celebrant. Uh, what's it do? <laughs> it's a, the, the three mana three two celebrant that bounces, right? Oh um, yeah, stockpiling celebrant. <laughs> stockpiling celebrant, exactly. <laughs> okay, That's... so our deck is not a very good root runner phone deck here, so I would take the uh, second knight of valor. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah that's a, it, we, we actually have, have pretty two good drops. Ones. We don't have that high of a curve, and yeah, I think. But I would yeah. like to trigger my up the beanstalk. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I forgot we had up the beanstalk. Mm -hmm. I. It might shock. I've drafted this set a lot, and I've literally never cast up the beanstalk. Oh, is a card I really I, like here is the uh, is the reindeer. I don't think we're taking it now because now I think we're gonna take the two. Like last time we picked the four drop over the two drop, then we're gonna take the two drop like in the same. Yeah, thing. but yeah, I think the reindeer is pretty good. Um, yeah. I like, like reindeer these, these when you have like valors reindeer. and stuff to curve yeah. into it. That's pretty good. Good synergy. I didn't realize ninety valor is a combo with the witch talker, but it's nice. Ooh. We get Utopia Sprawl. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm gonna take that, I guess. Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, as if we didn't have that much to ramp into, but this is like the best ramp spell, so yeah, sure. We I'm kind of like also interested in the genealogist, though. Like that card would be pretty good in what we're trying to do, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm gonna take the uh, the, the Tobish Ball though. Some things are just too good. Also, lets us know. cast Gingerbread Hunter sometimes, and yeah, that's nice upside. Uh, sideboard card and the yeah, Moment of Valor. This is best of one though, so it doesn't actually matter, right? Yeah, but it's good to still like. I don't know. I kind of like just thinking about it i feel like this yeah, card is like the just... perfect sideboard card because you can bring it in and then if there is a big creature then you get that and sometimes there's other value out of it mm -hmm. yeah it's not like it's flexible enough to not just, just be dead every card um, in our colors <laughs> i think i take the two three yeah yeah because i kind of want a three drop here i want a little bit more beef um mm -hmm. there's also titanic like i kind of just want to take the entire pack uh, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> all of them are valuable. But I th think the two three would make more sense in our deck. It's like a conspiracy draft where there's like random like draft affecting cards that let you like take the entire pack. So the <laughs> the uh, edge world pack is definitely too late here. I do love bestial bot line. Like I, it's not going to be in this deck. We don't have the synergies for it. But yeah, I do love that that thing. Um, it seems like we're not that high on bargain right now. So our protective parents is like you know a little bit worse than it might be otherwise. Still a fine card, like if you just like you know take something out for a couple of turns and pop your creature, like that's okay. You might also yeah. like finish the game. Yeah, our deck. Also, playing the second beanstalk worm. We might not even play the first one. Yeah. Um, so when you build your deck, do you have like, do you like start with all your cards in and then cut them one by one? Do you start from scratch and then add them in I one start by one? With like, uh, usually like I usually like while I draft, I have like an idea of like this is probably not something we're playing, so like I end up putting that in the sideboard. Um, oh, I actually didn't realize I have two different techniques when I do it like live versus um, online. But like, oh. online, I usually like I'm building my deck as I draft it, right? So I have like, you know, I end up with like 26 cards and then I make the last three cards, usually. Mm -hmm. um, live, we have to like sort our deck and like register the entire pool before we build mm -hmm. the deck. Mm -hmm. so, like everything, like nothing is built. And then I just like lay up the cards as like the ones I'm certain are going to be in the deck. I start laying those up in a curve, like when I get by. And when I like, you know, flick to a card that like, I, I think I might play, but I'm not sure. I put it, like, sideways. And so I end up with, like, these, like, 15-ish cards and, like, you know, like, 10 sideways cards. And then I try oh. and, like, figure out what is actually going in the deck. So, nice. Yeah. I so here... Different... Yeah, so here I can assume we're going to cut Bestial Bloodline. We're probably going to the cut... Cutting the cutting Unassuming Sage. The uh, Return yeah. Triumphant, because we don't have that many threes. Yeah, probably not running... We don't have them. synergies with it. We're probably cutting the... Yeah, the Outrider, Yes. I think the other threes are better. We don't have that many, but definitely cutting one of the worms, if not both. We're cutting mm -hmm. the uh, the sky breeze tracker. Yep. Then we're leaping ambush. Maybe gets out. Oh uh, yes. So now we only have to make a couple more cuts, and uh, yeah, these are always like uh, yeah, these are always like the most interesting ones. There's like two, three, four, five. We have six two drops. It looks like four. Five, yeah, it's six, a little much. I think I would definitely cut a witch stalker here. Yeah, we need we need that boy too much. Um, and it's then still dying we don't have you. we don't have that much. I think if you haven't played with the power I would like you know encourage you to try it. But we don't have that much um bargain, yeah. which makes mm -hmm. it worse. We also mm -hmm. have like enough in neighbors for our glutton that we don't need it. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's between the porridge and the beanstalk worm. I would the say the fact worm. that we have howling gale fang makes me more interested in the worm. So and and also the fact that we have um on the beanstalk plus I just like kind of like the worm like he's just yeah. a good boy. Reach creatures he's, are just nice. Like reach yeah. just happens to be an upside in some. I, I almost uh, almost lost uh like to my own worm against uh, Seth Manfield playing like you know the the finals of our second draft but um oh, your own worm. Had, like it was it had a trample roll on it and it was uh and it had four plus counters from like my uh uh my virtue. <laughs> Uh, oh, so it was like a, t a 10 power um, nice. trampler and he stole it with active treason and like what coverage didn't show is that he had the fling in hand as well um oh, so gosh. i like almost died but i had to like double block the beanstalk worm to like not die to the fling and i would go to exactly one life if he had and it was yeah oh, it, my it was crazy that's awesome um, did he show you that you had the, the fling later yeah like, exactly what? and then i told him yeah. that he missed lethal and then he got very mad um, oh my <laughs> gosh <laughs> That's such a brutal thing to say to someone. You You're like, the, uh, oh, you missed the well on the beanstalk worm and then fling it like before attacking, so he couldn't let me do the double block. Um, oh and I would have, I would have died. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's man. I always wonder how those interactions go between like the players you're playing the tournament. You're like. 
oh uh, yeah, uh, that was a good ma- match, and then you just move on and like take it to the bank that you could have lost that game. But nope, you just to be fair, he he asked me about that turn because it was really difficult, so we talked about it together, and uh, I was like, wait, could you have done this? And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so we have yeah, one more cut. Okay with one there. Um, yeah. Sometimes that's why you play the games. I, I realized also, like you know, I should have like because he was like holding cards, like and like bought it. He bought it in five cards and like started playing red in his like uh, black green deck. So I think mm-hmm. I should have like pieced together that one card he could have brought in was like an actor treason effect, and I should have sacrificed my trample rule to the hand that glutton. Like I played like uh... on that turn. I, I should have been aware of that. So that's like you know, I, I was like really nervous when he stole it. I'm like, oh no, did I just throw this? Oh Why yeah, not? yeah, yeah. Like, Whenever I I remember like. Keeping track of how many cards they sideboard in is interesting because whenever I play in any in-person event, I like sideboard in basic lands and then sideboard out basic lands mm. just to like keep them guessing. Like, um, and uh, so just so that they always think I'm sideboarding in cards and they'll be intimidated. But um, obviously, I feel like you guys probably have better. Th- you guys probably aren't making that much headway doing that because they're not going to be intimidated in the, in the World Championships. They all they're all pretty good. So we have one more cut oh, to yeah, make. Sure. What do you want to? Remove? Oh, we do actually have one more cut. Um, with seventeen lands, that's probably good. I okay, so it might be the worm and it might be the candy trail. Yeah, I mean, worms are good. Um, we can't so we don't have like the fact that we don't have mummy, uh, means that like the candy trail is is worm. Wait, this is what we end up calling it in team house. Like, I'm sorry, I love it. It's that's like, no, no, don't like, be sorry. Say, that's a highlight, that's incredible. We would say for like top name, and Javier would be like, watch and then would say mummy, and he would be like, oh, mummy, yes, 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 very good. <laughs> so, that's like, amazing. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so we can cut the candy trail and Yeah, then, I think I think we need yeah. to leave the beanstalk worm in here for like, you know, uh Yeah, up the beanstalk yeah, just, shenanigans. Just like, mm-hmm. The synergy well, beanstalk. I mean, mostly right. like for uh for morale reasons, but yeah, yeah. for morale reasons, That's exactly. True. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Simon. Where uh if folks are interested in your stuff, you do coaching, you mm-hmm. they can find you on Twitter at Mr. Checklist Card, still a hilarious tag. And uh, you're also competing in the modern super league, so people can root you on there. Any parting thoughts you have before you head out? Um, no, I, I don't have that much to add. I'll just say that, like, it's a, um, a metafy.com is where you can find, uh, right. my coaching and other coachings, uh, like coaching people for, for magic. So yeah, it's a, yeah. a few cool I'll, things to check out. With I'll link it in the description for sure. Yeah. Yep. It's fantastic to be able to just chat with the player of the year, just been having sustained <laughs> success across all formats all year long. And, uh, it's great to just hear how you approach limited and, uh, Hopefully, I'll be able to pilot this deck adequately. And uh, as I said at the, during the draft, if it gets maximum wins, it's all due to your <laughs> dra- deck building. And if it loses badly, then it's all due to my gameplay. So all the credit for you, all the blame for me, just how we like it here on the channel. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. That's, that's, but yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, looks pretty nice, though. Yeah. Yeah. But have a good one, and uh, I'll see everybody else in the games. Oh, my God. I can't wait for you to copy up the Beanstalk with Yana. That's going to be so good. Okay, perfect. We'll get double up the Beanstalk. I'll make sure I let you know how that goes. Okay, doke, folks. See you there. If you have been enjoying my channel and would like to help support my content, you can do so at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Patrons gain access to some exclusive rewards like access to my tier list and some bonus content and things like that. But also the Patreon funds help me continue making high quality videos on a consistent basis. So if my drafts or my draft guide have helped you win a couple more booster packs or helped you have more fun playing Magic, then you can support my content and help me continue making these videos by becoming a patron. Huge shout out to those patrons who support at the credits level. It really means a lot to me. But without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round number one. I'm so excited to play this deck. I'm still a little bit, uh, that was a thrill, let's just say, having the player of the year as a guest. Just, Simon's awesome. Just, you can tell he loves the game. <laughs> just when we opened Yenna, and this is an easy keep though. We're gonna Utopia Sprawl, naming white. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm overjoyed that we were able to have him on as a guest. If we if we already had white mana, we probably would have named black so that we could uh, cast the uh, gingerbread hunter card, the black half of it. But this is going to be good. This is my first up the beanstalk coming up soon. But for now, we're going to go with red tooth vanguard. Wow, that was awesome. Also, I do. It's just amazing that you can get Simon as a coach, and uh, it, it's. I was thinking about this at leading up to having him on as a guest, but it's not often in the world that you can just gain access to insights from like someone who's like the best in the world at something and the fact that that is something that is possible 
in uh, the world of magic. I'm not going to attack here because I want to knightly valor this, and so trading isn't good for me. Uh, the fact that you can get coaching from him, Medify.com, and then just he's like their top coach because for obvious reasons he's the world champion and he's just a really awesome part of the community. Like, yeah. <laughs> Fun story about Simon. I met him at a Grand Prix that was constructed. I was playing the limited portion. He was destroying the modern one. He won. Okay, I don't think I can go for this um, into three mana. They could have flick a coin. It would just be really bad for me. I think I'm just going to play Witch Stalker and three rolls of Forage. And then they'll kill one of my guys at instant speed. And uh, Bob's your uncle. Yeah. Frantic Firebolt. Yep. But I can Territory Witch Soccer this thing up and no attacks. But yeah, so he was playing a constructed Grand Prix and there was a bunch of flex slots in the deck and he just, instead of just like choosing one, he just put a bunch of one ofs in, in the Hogak deck. And he was like, yeah, I just want to show that Hogak is so broken that it doesn't really matter what you pick for your flex slot. It's still going to win you the game. And uh, he won that Grand Prix. So really accomplished Magic player. Awesome to get to chat with him. Okay, so they have four mana up. They're using the Godzilla lands, so clearly a person of ca of quality and taste. Okay, so they only have two mana up now, which means, and they don't have any way to sack things, so I think it's fairly safe to go for the Knightly Valor now. Trigger my up the Beanstalk. Because they can't have anything for two mana. We can't bring our guy back at the moment, but we have these cooped up, so our guy will be coming back. And then we will attack them for five. We still have this three bowls of porridge. We don't want to forget about it. I, I just think when, when we took the three bowls of porridge and he said, it's just, I like the flavor. I was like, that's amazing. Just such a good comment to make. I was like, oh yeah, I'm a fan of porridge. I'm going to take it the in-game equivalent when I can. Whoa, attacking with Ash. So that could be they now have Kellen's Light Blades available. I think... Um, hmm. Hmm. The three bolt of forward is going to be used to take out the grand ball guest, pretty much. This could be Kellen's light blades on my witch stalker. This could also be. Um, plus three plus oh. Do I want to block? Because if I attack them, then they're going to Kellen's light blades me anyway. I'm not going to block. I'm just going to get my value out of my cooped ups. So I'm going to do this on my turn. Because if they tap something, I can get my value to play this. I'm on their guy, get back my Red Tooth Vanguard. And I'm not going to attack into the Kellen's Light Blades that they're pretty clearly holding up. Oh, they have something else. Stroke of Midnight. Oh, so they didn't have Kellen's Light Blades. Or they would have let me attack. Is that what they had before? Stroke of Midnight? Two unveil guide. Okay. Sure. Cooped up that guy. Play Hopeful Vigil. And then next turn I can use the second mode of this to tap tap their Red Tooth Vanguard and get a nice attack in. I really want to win with this deck because I feel like when you have a Player of the Year helping you... And for those who don't know, Player of the Year in Magic the Gathering is like based on your finishes in major tournaments across the entire year. So the way he got that is by i'm going to just attack here and then i'll tap this guy on their turn which means it can't yeah that way if they play something more threatening i get to get rid of that we don't have any ways to discard extra cards so i'm just going to play this but it's like you have to win do well in all the major tournaments and simon definitely did that he made the top eight of the last three major events so he top aided the pro tour lord of the rings he top aided the world championship he top aided the um march of the machine okay I'm glad I saved the tapping here now.
tap this guy. We'll get our scrying on. I don't think I want forests. I mean, they're helpful, but not that helpful. And then I will exile their Tomb Veil Guide. I want to keep at least one of these in play in case I draw my Yenna. Ooh, just what he said. I get to use this to bargain now. Okay. Griffin Airy, okay. Does not seem exactly what you want in a red-white deck. I don't need the life gain right now, so I'm just going to sack that. I guess I could have sacked the Utopia Sprawl. That might have been better. But yeah, we played up the Beanstalk and we won, it looks like. So clearly unbeatable. Okay. They're going to have to do better than that. Woo! Got the win! Oh, man. As Simon said, he lost the first round in a lot of his drafts, but clearly he was saving all of the first round wins for when he was guesting on our on our channel, our section here. Really nice win there. Our deck performed pretty admirably, I would say. I think the that that one kind of showed why the like three mana kill something, make a one one isn't the best. Our deck had pretty good, just all the cards did well. Three bowls of porridge was actually great. Tapping something, killing something, used it for bargain. Even though I probably shouldn't have used it for bargain. Yeah, just a pretty solid draft overall. I mean, draft match overall. Um, I think it's it was really cool hearing the takeaways of his team and their testing from like actual like competitive drafts and how different the format is. Because I I think it's uh, it was really cool. He's just like we don't like any of these. We didn't really like the X one hate cards, and those are cards that a lot of people have been liking. But I guess when you're really good and you don't play as many one toughness creatures, the X1 hate becomes a lot less good. Oh, do they have a one drop? Of course they do. Okay, they have messed up card sleeves, though. Clearly they don't take care of their cards very well. Ho, 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 ho. A two drop, you say? I would be happy to trade this off with you about it. I also have a turn one forest. Black green is more of a grindy matchup. Oh, they're off to a good start. I think we just want to play this guy. Because if we do turn three Curse of the Werefox, fight their Root Rider Fawn, which is something we can definitely consider doing, we then have a 3-3 Vigilance Attacker. And we don't really think they're going to be attacking us soon. Okay. Okay, are they going to put it onto itself? They aren't. Okay, so that's actually a big game for us. Because now we get to do the optimal play of just fighting that guy. That would be... If I had known they had this rare, I would have played the Witch Stalker because I can fight this guy. If they put the thing on that guy... Then uh, I wouldn't have been able to do this. I might have still had to do this, but... I don't know why. I feel like they probably should have played around me having that. They have all, all three colors on turn three. I thought they were a black-green deck. But this thing now, I can block the Root Rider Fawn, which is nice. I could block the Root Rider Fawn if I was not a coward. But alas. I don't want to get wrecked by Rat Out. And also, I'm winning this race, even though they do get to scry. Griffin Airy, okay. Playing like oh beautiful. Hmm. I don't have a way to sacrifice it right now. I think we just attack, see what happens. It does get punished by leaping ambush if they do it have something. And then I think I'm gonna try to hit my land drop.
And then if I do hit a land, then I will play my cooped up. And the reason I'm doing this is I think at this point they probably have a combat trick or a rat out. And this just makes their combat trick a lot worse. And I have Princess Takes Flight to like take out a big creature if they do have one. Okay, Storm killed Vanguard. Sure. Two Storm killed Vanguards, sure. This is where I really want to draw a land so I can Nightly Valor up my guy. Boom. Because next turn they're presumably going to cast this guy. Oh, I get to draw off. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot I had up the Beanstalk. That's insane. Oh my gosh. That's just absurd. So hopefully they don't have a land here and they just have to play this guy. Oh, Archon, okay. Ginger Brute, sure. So we're gonna take this guy out. We don't currently have a plan for dealing with them other than just killing them. Which they can't really prevent us from doing at the moment. They just cast their big guy. We kill them on the ground. Okay. Oh, what a rip off the top of the old library. And we draw a card off up the beanstalk. Oh my gosh. No wonder they were high on this card. This is insane. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, terrible mana tapping costing me the game. No, this is why I say that I blame myself if we lose, because I should have just tapped differently. So they're dead if they cast their other 6-7. Oh, yep. Hmm. Like, if this thing was in play, they would just be dead this turn, I think. Because they'd have... No, they wouldn't be dead. They'd be fine. Mm -hmm. I'm actually in okay shape here. I have a lot of top decks that win me the game. I can't attack here because they just go block here. I guess they would eat this guy and then... Okay, I was going to stop and scry on upkeep, but who needs that when you just top deck your best possible card? Gosh, we're going to get to live the double up the Beanstalk dream. I think we still sack this to try and scry to. Tough cookie, okay. Red tooth, okay. We definitely win this board stall. Thanks to Yenna. Oh my gosh, we're going to go off with Yenna and Knightly Valor. This is actually insane. Okay, cooped up. We literally drew the combo. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we go this.
I'll attach it to there. Six, seven. Don't particularly need those. That could be good for the monster roll. And then I can exile their guy. They also only have one, two, three, four, five blockers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attackers. Uh oh, maybe they're just dead if I just copy this and put it on this guy. Let's just double check. So they have one, two, three, four, five blockers. If I just take out this guy as a blocker as well, then they have four block. I can't do that actually. No, I have to copy Nightly Valley. They have one, two, three, four, five attack five blockers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attackers. So they can block everything but my two biggest creatures. I mean my two smallest. And my two smallest is two, five. I'm just gonna send in with this guy. I think I could have done if I could have had more time to do the math, I might have known that I could win. What the heck is this? It's like a cool whoa. Neat. Yeah. And this just ensures that I can copy again next turn. As long as I untap with Yenna, I'm going to win this game. Oh, another Knightly Valor? Don't mind if I do. Boom! Got the win! Wow! Our deck is awesome! I can see why he got so excited when he saw the Yenna. And then we literally switched colors. That was a good call by him. He was like, yeah, we're not really blue. And I'm like, yeah, let's dodge blue-green. That's like dodging a bullet. And then we get this sweet Yenna deck. My gosh. Oh my gosh. I feel like I didn't even play that optimally. I could have had my Witch Stalker in turn play a turn earlier if I just tapped better. Wow. That was seriously impressive. No big deal, just uh, 2 and 0, classic, classic vibes, living the Yenna life. Wow, that was awesome. That was awesome. Oh my gosh, just cruising. I'm so happy. I'm like, that was awesome. Oh my gosh, we have a great hand here. On the draw, who cares? We can't quite use the black mana version of that, but it's fine. Gonna play this guy so I can get him in the graveyard. I could have played this and then tried to wear Fox it up. Uh, okay, they firebolt him, sure. I guess I should have played around Flick a Coin, maybe. Nope, can't afford to pay. Ah, Johan, hello. Hmm. I'm going to play this safe and steady. Next time I'm just going to exile that guy and... Uh, and uh, hope they can't... They can only get like one card out of it max right now. Uh, of course they got the card. Why wouldn't they? Fine trade for me. Just gonna make Johan go away and then play this guy. It might be a little bit passive. I could have just played a glutton that turn. Of course they have a back of Johan. Why wouldn't they have a back of Johan? What kind of world are we living in where they don't have a back of Johan? I don't really 
not the parents either. I would call that slightly unlucky. Them having two copies of their card and the card they got off their first deal on helped them cast the second one. Just send in the game. I'm going to make this guy 6-6 six, six, trample too. Hopefully they don't get value here. Always got to stop that value when you can. Cap Johan. This does two to target creature, okay. Definitely attacking with everything here. Oh! Devastating! Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, you can do that, sure. They have something else. Come on, man! Oh, they can't even kill it. Okay. Sure. I have 10 power of trample. They have 9 power of toughness. They can block here and here. Three balls of forage getting it done. The world, the, the world's top eight competitor tech, the player of the year tech, literally never played three balls of forage in my life, and it's winning me games. Oh my gosh, I was so worried when they played the second Johan. But no, you don't need to worry about that. You just destroy them with porridge, the power of oatmeal. My goodness. I'm still laughing over when <laughs> Three Balls of Forge, it has great flavor. And I couldn't tell whether he was talking about the card, which obviously has great flavor, or just porridge in general. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Uh, just double check I'm recording. Of course I am. I'm a professional. I don't forget these things. Oh, ho, ho, ho. baby, we can cast a turn for Hamlet Glutton. We're going to name green with this. Just so we make sure we have double green available. Turn two protective parents, no big deal. Turn four princess takes flight, turn five. No big deal, just accelerating to turn two. And then we're going to cast this guy on turn four if we draw a land. Feels like almost a waste to use Princess Takes Flight on a 3-drop. But it lets us cast our Hamlet Glutton, so that'll be good. <sighs> the way this game goes is going to be interesting. Howling Gale Fang might be my best draw. Sure. 
get the other guy. I want to do this on a three or four drop anyway. If I'm not guaranteed to cast the glutton, I'm not going to play the princess takes flight yet. Okay. I could just cast the glutton. Kind of abandon that value. We don't have uh, mommy in our deck. Pick up the princess takes <laughs> Oh man. We'll just do this. We'll get our cards out. We have another removal spell in hand. I didn't even count up the number of bargain cards in our deck. We have Glutton, we have Light Blades. I don't even know if we have any others. Bargain. Light Blades, Glutton. We don't have any Archon's Glories. Okay. They're at 12. Next turn I can just shrink this guy. Or Knightly Valor up my other guy. Or something. Give a little something something. Gosh, what do we have in our deck that can actually sacrifice it? Maybe just those two. That's kind of tough. And we have Yenna as like a combo piece with it. It's just a good card. If you can ever sack it. And we can also just use it as a finisher. If we had just played the Glutton, we might be in better shape. But we did get to hit them for 5 because of the plus 2, plus 2 and flying there. Relatively simple. They have 4 cards in hand. I really just don't want them to have discard effects. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to pacify the thing anyway. Yep, yep. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to attack with protective parents yet, because if I uh, nightly Val or something, it could go well for me. No need to ditch the hearth elemental just yet, but they could have some like oof or something. So I do kind of want to get it exiled, but I have Yenna, so I don't really want to exile it, but. Yeah, they could have reanimation stuff, so I don't really want it. Yeah. I think leaving it in play is fine for now. I guess reanimation doesn't matter because it gets exiled. They have some splaining to do, some stuff they gotta get handled here. Welcome to Sweet Tooth, probably won't cut it.
We're doing this partly to get waifs in their bargain fodder, potentially, as well. This should get the job done. I played around Candy Grapple a decent, decently well here by putting it on my 6-6, six, six, but if they like wanted to go like block here, block here, they take 7. If they double block, they still die to Trample. Wow. Whoa, they just go to one. They don't even... They could have, like, double-blocked that guy and didn't done five to him. I guess they died if they did that, because they take six. Exactly. Wow. Magic is a game of inches. Because they could have, like, in theory, gone, like, double block this guy. It tramples over for four, and but then they take the three before they can Witch Stalker's Frenzy it. Another win! This is huge! I'm just going to double check our deck list to see how many ways we actually have to sack. Of course I had fun. Of course. We're channeling the, the Simon fun. Because he always seems to be having fun. I mean, I have fun a lot of the time too. But this is... This is glorious. Oh my gosh. Oh man. So, let's see. Do we have other ways to sacrifice it that I'm not remembering right now? We've got to remember every card in our deck without being able to look at it. That's the way of the world. We also have... We have Kellen's Light Blades. And we've got Glutton. Only two ways to sack it. So we're going to have to be careful with our Princess Takes Flight. It's very powerful when it works, but and we're 4-0, so clearly a masterpiece of deck construction. And the card is great with Yenna and still lots of stuff. You can exile tokens. But it's good to know your bargain count. Oh, it's a battle of the Bolas. Little do they know I've got Player of the Year on my side, helping me draft. Oh, baby, the Tough Cookie. Simon was so happy to see Tough Cookie. It made me happy. They mulligan. We have turn one Utopia Sprawl on the play. We're still going to name green with this. So we can play Hamlet Glutton if we draw it. I do, at some point, want to be able to name Black with this to cast our uh, our other guy. But this is just important to do this way. Ooh, Cottage. The Restless Cottage. Hmm, nice. That's tough. Attack first. I'm trying to play around Candy Grapple here. I'm just going to play the 4-3. I know this doesn't exactly play around Candy Grapple, but the thing was is I wanted to be able to go double green, put the thing on this guy, and play Tough Cookie, but I was then worried about them just Candy Grappling this guy. My whole turn gets ruined. I was going to float the two green and play the planes and whatever. But now I don't have to. Ah, that does not get some... does not gain haste. I don't want to trade my 4-3 for their 3-2. A slight error, shall we say. Just a smidgen. Exile the witch. 
Now I can turn my guy into an artifact. And I get to put this onto the tough cookie. Which I guess they already wanted to kill. So maybe I should put it on this guy. But they also kind of want to kill this guy. Because he's going to be lethal next turn with the flying. Unless they sack their food. Definitely buff this guy. Animate this. Attack with everything. If they animate this. They can block the tough cookie, take four, ten. They block the bat dead. Block my food token, they take three, nine. But they won't be able to also have the mana to sack their food to go up to nine. Well, we are just uh wrecking people. Ah, they have Goose Mother. At uh MagicCon Vegas. Elijah Wood was doing this DJ thing, the guy that plays Frodo, and he was like, I, there was a bunch of people dressed with like these little goose hat, hats on, he's like, I have to understand, what's going on with the geese? It was so funny. Another win! The good guys just destroying. This is incredible. Absolute demolition derby here. Oh my gosh. That was incredible. Five and zero. Oh. Oh my gosh. This is just awesome. Just dominant. Pure and simple. <laughs> Even though I animated a food completely unnecessarily. Okay, on the draw. Can we keep this? I think we have to mulligan. We have all of our expensive cards. We don't have enough lands. We don't have a single two drop. That's a tough one to mull though. We'll keep this. Ditch porridge. We have our little game winning combo here. All we need is a planes or a utopia sprawl. First try. Definitely don't want to cooped up their Ember veteran. Not always, I don't always want to play my blocker, but in this case, I think it's fine. Because I can trade with Grand Ball Guest. I could, like, Kellen's Light Blades, the Grand Ball Guest. Also, if they, like, overextend, I can, uh, like, cooped up. I don't really want to cooped up until Yenna's already in play, though. Like, oh, okay. That's good for me. I'm kind of hoping they go for the Embereth veteran play. Put the young hero roll on court here. I try to attack and make it a 4-4. I kill the Kellen's Light Blades. I get blown up by a combat trick, but then they put a lot of resources in. My cooped up is better. Also, like, what combat trick could they even have there? It'd have to be, like, Monstrous Rage.
which is Mark, okay. They target the Embereth veteran with the Witch's Mark. Okay. That did not go well. I'm just thinking, like, hopefully I can, like, block there. Okay, there. My cards have not lined up, you could say. This is lining up very badly. Two to the bottom. That's a little bit okay. I hope I can trade this. That'd be good for me. Trade this. Jam Yenna. Top deck and enchantment. Go to, go to the victory bus. I'm already on a mulligan here, so this is like, I need to top deck like Knightly Valor or something, which would be the best. Okay, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Here I'm priced into blocking, because half of the cards I'm afraid of are like plus two, plus two, and that would kill me if I don't block. So I have to block here if they attack, which is unfortunate. A land is a fine draw because then I can play four, three, plus uh, I can play the aura plus the four, three. I could also do the life gain plus the 4 3. Decline. Because now they can't really attack. I have a 5 5. If they do attack, I've got. If they don't attack, I can put the thing on this guy, bring back my guy, play my guy. I really want to find time to crack this food, but I think for now, it's better to just keep my board developed. And if they have like a blank draw step, or like a random creature, I win. Because I can put a roll on this to make this also for toughness, which means it can block this and this. I just want to be able to crack this food. I'd feel so much safer. I'd feel so much safer! They're running out of time. Okay, Ash. Okay. Am I dead? I don't think so. Perfect. Oh my gosh, what a rip. I'm just going to play this and crack my food. Because I really do want to crack the food. I don't want to get too greedy here. Next turn, I have a really good turn lined up for if I don't draw a good spell. The scrying is an important part of this, but just getting up to eight life is going to be huge.
Sure. Oh, those are both fantastic here. Start sending in with the Vigilance guy. I think making him four toughness is the most valuable. Do not need the lands. Okay. Wow, this is just disgusting. Yeah, Hamlet Glutton's going to be good enough. Try to end the game quickly here. Or they can top deck like an Archon or something like that. Let's just double block. Minimize what can go wrong. If they have another Archons thing, they still lose their guy. I don't know if I was supposed to attack all there. I mean, if they have Kellen's Life Blades, they get to kill my Yenna and live, and then they can steal my Glutton and they still die. I think it's fine. I think they're dead. But oh my gosh, are we six and do? Oh my gosh, Yenna just taking over the game. That was looking grim there when my Kellen's Life Blades plan didn't work. They just like saved their guy, their courtier was huge, and then I just played Yenna and everything was okay. Oh my gosh, we're six and do. We could just have the easiest 7-0 seven, seven run ever. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Simon Nielsen is a beast. I guess, folks, it's uh, as good a time as any to advertise that he does coaching. Because, I mean, he helped me with one draft and I'm undefeated. I've literally never lost a game of Magic since speaking to Simon Nielsen, the player of the year. So maybe that's uh, uh, something to consider. Something to consider. Well, this hand is fantastic. My gosh. Two drop into three drop into removal spells. Oh, baby. Oh, it's also just great two drop into reasonable three drop. Wow. And we're on the play. This is, I think we're on the play. This could go well for us. This could go well for us. Oh, baby. The tough cookie into the savior of the sleeping. Into probably just animating food and hitting them. They're playing a blue deck.
I was tempted to just animate my guy because they could just have a counter spell here, which isn't the best for me. Okay, they don't have a counter spell. I was still going to jam this guy because, like, I have no idea if they have a spell stutter or whatever it's called. I think it's spell stutter. Ah, blue black! Say hello to my green white deck. I will kill and slight blades their guy. I still have my cooped up. And I have this food to start animating soon. Which will let this thing attack. Okay. Sure. Hmm. Just going for max damage here. The reason I did it like this is because if I play it this way, I can then use the Gingerbread Hunter adventure part to kill like their 3-2 if they play it again. And if I exile this thing and this goes to the graveyard, this guy grows. This is the dream. That worked out well. That worked out well. So basically the cooped up, it wasn't put on a premier target, but it allowed my gingerbread hunter to do exactly what I wanted it to do. I was hoping they'd draw a land play that guy. Life would be good. So just gonna kill their 3-3. Three, three. I'm about to get a huge value boost from this guy. They don't have they have plenty of spells, so they're not gonna start pumping this guy up for a while. I can exile this guy so it won't have lifelink after a bit. That was a lot of creatures to mill. I will say that was a lot of creatures. Wow, the no value play there. That's good for me. I will cooped up to exile the, get rid of the Baronauti coming up here. This thing's a little bit scary. Maybe I should have got rid of the Baronauti instead of the Fell Rider.
That causes their cruel samophage to grow. Maybe I should have killed this Baronauti instead of their fell horseman. I'm in okay shape, though. I've got some time. I got these foods. They have one card. I'm not going to play around anything here. That's maybe the biggest turnaround I've, I've had in the game. Just like, I literally... I once again forgot that I was going to draw a card off of up the Beanstalk there. Once again. But, that was pretty absurd. That was devastating. And now next turn I can animate both of my foods. And hit them for like a billion. What the heck was that turn? This literally was... What the heck was up the Beanstalk there? I literally just got to go like, Yeah, I'll turn my 5-5 five five into a 7-7 seven seven and then an 8-8 eight eight and it'll eat your 6-6. Six six. What? Oh, that would be so good for me if that was a, if they make a trade here. Especially the Baronauti, because Baronauti actually kind of holds back my tutus. Okay, that's a much more reasonable trade. Oh my gosh, we have we we're we're on the precipice. We're gonna go undefeated. I haven't gone undefeated this entire format. Oh my gosh, we're going to do it! Oh my gosh. We're going to do it. So I have 4, 8, 16. If I attack with everything, let's just say they killed this guy. Ate this guy. And then they take 4, 8, 10, 12, 13. I'm going to attack with everyone but the Tough Cookie. Because I lose so much if they kill the Tough Cookie. Yes! Yes! Undefeated! Oh my gosh, I literally haven't had an undefeated run. I've gone 7-1 and one a couple times, but oh my gosh. Simon's just like, yeah, I don't really draft on Arena. I really needed better practice. I guess when you just go undefeated so easily on Arena. My gosh. That was awesome! The player of the year helps me go undefeated. That's a heck of a... Oh my gosh. What a draft. Oh my gosh. Let's go. That was awesome. Absolutely fantastic. Let's just quickly wrap this up. I mean, obviously... Yenna was fantastic. Three bowls of porridge was great. Up oh, the beanstalk was so sick. What a card. Oh my gosh. This was great. Knightly Valors were great. The second Knightly Valor that he made sure we took, that ended up being clutch. Princess Takes Flight was good even with only two bargains. This was good. The Gingerbread Hunter was good in that last game, especially the, the puny snack part of it. I love the Hamlet Glutton. Overall, just a fantastic draft. Huge, huge shout out to Simon Nielsen for coming on as a guest. He is one of the best Magic players in the world. Player of the year. As I already said, he does coaching. So be sure to check that out on Medify. It's linked in the description down below. Check him out on Twitter. Follow him there for his Magic thoughts. And uh, let's just all collectively wish him continued success on the Pro Tour. Because it's a lot of fun watching him find success. 
if you did make it all the way to the end of this video in the comment section down below, leave hashtag perfect draft because it really was perfect. I had so much fun drafting with Simon and then we literally didn't lose a game. <laughs> you could leave hashtag perfect porridge uh, <laughs> because that that is kind of a funny joke from the draft, but as well, but hashtag perfect draft to let me know you made it all the way till the end of the video. Uh, remember to hit the like button, subscribe and for more and comment with your questions, thoughts and feedback. Let me know what you thought of this guest episode. And if you'd like to see more guests in the future, just also, yeah, make sure you let Simon know if you are uh, uh, going over to Twitter or something that you did enjoy this sort of thing as well because it's uh it was really nice to have him on and uh i just want him to know that he was appreciated by all of you folks but yeah that's gonna do it for this one absolutely stellar draft i hope you enjoyed it and i'll talk to you next time